Hello, this is Jim and me with IT Supplies. Today we're going to talk about how do you set up your color management policies in GMG's Print Factory RIP and Extended Modules. Um, at the bottom of my taskbar here, you'll see that this is the actual Print Factory RIP queue. Um, you have your layout, and then you also have your editor tool. In all three of these, we can set color management policies. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the standard. If you want to have a standard color management policy um, across all workflows, you can set that up through the layout, edit, and then preferences. In here, you'll notice that you can set a standard reference profile if you like. So for instance, if you're doing photo workflows and everything goes to Adobe RGB, that could be your standard color reference for RGB. Um, if you were doing um, potentially proofing uh, workflows, maybe you can use Co uh, Coded Grackle 2006 or maybe ISO Coded um, Grackle 2013 CRPC6. Um, so you can set a standard reference profile here um, for the workflows that you're going to. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to sRGB as I'm working on a photo workflow here. Um, and then you can um, see on the color panel here under the layout preferences is where the actual color management policies globally for the RIP are located. So if I want to make sure um, that uh, I've set my RGB standard for sRGB, um, in my CMYK standard for Grackle, gray at black and white, and lab at D50, um, and then essentially your rendering intents. Now in Print Factory, uh, my choices for rendering intents for photo workflows uh, would be perceptual. A lot of times it's color metric, but the color metric workflow in Print Factory works a little bit differently than you might expect from a regular 8-bit driver. So my recommendation here would be to choose perceptual for photo workflows. For CMYK workflows, um, in production, I would be choosing perceptual as well. If I was proofing, simulating um, output of a different printer or a different media, or essentially just a proofing type of installation, I might choose absolute instead of perceptual for my rendering intent there. Now, um, keep in mind at the bottom here um, that these policies only get used um, if... For instance, I have embedded profiles set to remove. So let me explain that. So if you brought in a photo that was in Adobe RGB, um, essentially this rule to remove embedded profiles would remove the Adobe RGB tag on the incoming image into the RIP, and then it would tag whatever is set here in your RGB policies along with the rendering intent. So in this case, it would strip the Adobe RGB tag and then it would tag sRGB and send it through to the output profile um, in Print Factory. Um, so if you had this set to um, keep embedded profiles, so for instance, if you had a uh, file that came in as Adobe RGB, even though your color management policies are set to sRGB, because you've honored embedded profiles, it'll use the Adobe RGB tag before it goes through the, to the output profile. Um, so keep that in mind when you're selecting this. You want to. You're either going to trust, um, you know, all the files coming through and and honor the embedded profile, or if you want to normalize to one output condition, um, or essentially not or input condition, I should say, the sRGB, for instance, in this case, then you would want to remove any embedded profile and then have sRGB tagged before it goes through to the output profile. If you embed rendering intents into your images prior to coming through um, Print Factory's RIP, then you can also select honor the profile as well as the embedded rendering intent so that if for some reason something was selected as perceptual here, if you're honoring the rendering intent and it was as absolute, it would make sure to print that with an absolute rendering intent. Um, keeping pure colors pure are for very specific workflows. It's going to be pretty rare that anybody's going to need to select this box. So as you can see here with the preferences, I've set to sRGB for my RGB workflow, to Grackle for my CMYK workflow, and then I've set my standard reference profile to sRGB. 
So there you go. I've set my global <clears throat> color management policies. Now, I also would need to make sure that I set this in the editor rip for when I use the editor in Print Factory. So we'll go ahead and uh, it's going to go ahead and open that box. And here we go. Here's their box. And you can see on the color tab here, um, essentially I would want to set these settings exactly the same if I was uh, wanting to have a global workflow as what I have set in the layout as well. And you can see everything set to perceptual. Everything looks the same here. Um, we'll keep embedded profiles. Um, and then in this particular case, when you're bringing files in, um, you could have it ask. So if for some reason something comes in as Adobe RGB and you could say, well, your file's in Adobe RGB, but your standard profile is sRGB if you have it set to ask. And then you can decide, do I keep it as sRGB or do I change it to Adobe RGB? It's a very similar setting in, in Photoshop as well. Okay, so after that's all set, we can standardize our color management policies in Print Factory Editor. Um, the next place I want to show you where you can set your color management policies are within um, a print factory queue. So um, you can either add a queue this way. Um, I'm gonna go ahead into this queue over here that I've already created that was set up as a printer. Um, and you can notice that I'm using a photo printing workflow here. Um, I've set the queue name, so that's what the printer is registered as, so that if I wanted to move um, a folder off of uh, the local machine and onto a network, I can do so. And then on here, I can choose, you know, which media that we're going to, which is basically the premium glossy, which um, setting I'm going to choose master here and the proper variant for this particular Q hot folder setup. Now, for this setup alone, I could set this as a completely different setup. I could say, well, on glossy paper, which I know has a very large gamut, I want to have, have everything come in as Adobe RGB and I'm going to um, set to uh, honor embedded profiles but if something comes in as Adobe RGB then I'm going to go ahead and utilize that essentially and then in here I could say I'm going to set this to my typical Grackle 2006 coded 1v2 um, and then boom you're all set um, for this particular queue that's going to use different color management policies then we're set, for instance, um, as the standards in the layout itself. As you can see here, sRGB here, Adobe RGB into that queue setup. Um, the calibrator, which is this icon in the bottom right here, um, doesn't really have color management policies. I'll have separate videos on the calibrator preferences and, and things done in calibrator in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was useful. It is definitely a very important thing to set up your color management policies. Oftentimes when I'm on site, customer um, did not realize that these need to be set up um, and they're set to defaults, which might not be what um, they're aiming for in terms of um, input color spaces um, through their printing reps. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching this. If you would like to see more of these videos, please go to our YouTube channel.